thousand watts and an audience reach of 12 million listeners. KBLA Talk 1580 is a pioneer for black audio content, including our groundbreaking $2 million climate justice campaign and the most loyal, influential audience. According to an independent research study by the polling firm of Iteris, for the second consecutive year, KBLA Talk 1580 is the most trustworthy, reliable, and credible news source for black audiences and beyond in Southern California. Let KBLA Talk 1580 power your advertising dollars. Our omni-channel custom marketing solutions are specifically tailored to connect with your ideal target audience. We leverage audio, podcasts, streaming, digital, social media, and local activations to get your message out to the black community. Get in touch with our advertising team today at advertising at KBLA1580.com. That's advertising at KBLA1580.com. KBLA1580, we've got your black. You ready? It's the queen of royal bands. It's time for the Rob Report with Robin A. Highlighting people and things you should know about. Robin's got you covered. <laughs> Follow Robin at Robin Ayers. You're listening to the Rob Report on KBLA Talk 1580. Robin's got a lot to talk about. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. This is why. This is why. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. This is why. This is why. This is why I'm hot. I'm hot cause I'm fly. You ain't cause you not. This is why. This is why. This is why I'm hot. I'm hot cause I'm fly. You ain't cause you not. This is why. This is why. This is why I'm hot. You are inside the Raw Report on KBLA Talk 1580, where we bring you the latest and entertainment news, trending topics and interviews. I'm your host, Robin Ayers, with you Monday through Friday, 6 to 7 p.m. on your drive home. Happy birthday to Mims. Yeah, I think a lot of people that forgot about Mims. A lot of people did, but you know, happy birthday. Hope you are having a, a wonderful day out there and it falls on a Friday. That's a good look. Um, I, we have a lot to talk about on this show today, so let me go ahead and get to a couple of updates. It is National Co-Parenting Day. I hope you are co-parenting very well <laughs> today. I know Jess Hilarious had her child, her son's father, on the Breakfast Club with her today, and uh, you know they they hashed out a few things, but wound up being a very beautiful situation. So hopefully that is the case for a lot of people. Um, this this one here, okay, there seems to be a new rap battle on the horizon, and I don't like it, okay, because it's it's involving some of my favorites. It's Kendrick Lamar, it's, it's J. Cole, and it's Drake. Now, I feel like it's so unnecessary if that is, in fact, what's happening. This battle rap thing, I know it's been going on for a very long time. Sometimes it's very entertaining, but other times it could turn up a little bit. And I feel like it's it's a better look to collaborate than it is to go at each other. I don't know. Andy, you look like you're disappointed in that thought. Yeah, I love it. You love rap battle. Leave, leave that to the underground, you know, no. the battle rappers. No. No, think about that. Think about why we love Tupac and Biggie so much. You know what I'm saying? But like, look what happened. The whole the whole two coasts divided over that. And I think and I think that we have learned a lot from that experience. And I think what you're hearing from these individuals, it's all sport. Okay. That's all it is. It's all sport. Until it's not. That's my only thing. Man, that's that's my only thing. Jake, I don't. J. Cole not about to pull up on nobody and shoot. Drake ain't about to do that. None of his people's about to go do that. It's all sport. Okay. All right. Well, we'll leave it at that. I, I'd like for them, because they're some of the, they're three of the dopest uh, MC slash lyricists that we have. I'd prefer to see them collaborate on something. That's me personally. Well, we may break this down if things, I mean, fans are actually the ones who are putting this together because Kendrick Lamar hopped on this uh, this song with Future and Metro Boom and called Like That. And um, they're figuring it out. They're figuring out some of the things that he's saying. They're like, oh, that's a, that's a jab right there. That's a, that's a jab. At, and that's all it was. I'm sorry, Kendrick. That verse was okay. okay. It, was, it was okay. I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, Candace Owens, you know, we just talked about her yesterday. She has been fired from the Daily Wire for allegedly promoting anti-Semitism. Wow. And her, her she had a, in her interview yesterday, also on The Breakfast Club, 
She says that Ben Shapiro, who is the co-founder of Daily Wire, says that he didn't have the power to fire her. And today we wake up and here's this news. So we don't know what's going to happen um, from that. But, you know, good luck, Candace Owens. I mean, she's got a lot of things going on anyway. Um, lastly, Amanda Seals, she's responded to all of this. She got a lot of backlash when um, she went out there saying that she doesn't get love from a lot of these award shows and these black networks in the black media space. She said she doesn't get a lot of love. A lot of people stood up for her. We had a whole conversation about Amanda Seals, and I believe that we all agreed she deserves some more uh, acknowledgement, recognition. She deserves more love and her flowers. But she says she didn't get that. She says that especially in black media, she did not get that. And it brought her to tears. It was it was actually kind of, kind of sad. She was like, I'm just going to go where I'm want where I'm wanted. And that's in her own Patreon account. She's, <clears throat> what's up? That's in her own Patreon account. So she says that's where you can find her. Um, but we we love Amanda Seals. And whether you like it or not, she actually does very, very much stand up for the black community. So um, hopefully things get better for her and she is uh, acknowledged in the very, very near future. Okay, Um Let's go ahead and jump right into it with our contributor of the day, because like I said, we have lots to talk about. We are on the line. It's a treat today because it's Friday and we get TK Trinidad. How are you today, TK? Hey, how are you doing? I am doing very, very well. You know, I in days like this, TK, you know how things are always popping up in entertainment and you're like, oh, this, that, this, you know, they all make for great conversation. So um, mm -hmm. I definitely want to get first into this, uh, this conversation that Godfrey, the comedian, he's been around for so many years, but he had a conversation, mm -hmm. of course, on Club Shay Shay. I have a question about this whole Club Shay Shay thing, as a matter of fact, and we'll talk about that on the other side, but he calls comedians black comedians whack he calls the Ooh. black comedians whack let's let's take a listen to what he says but he he actually makes a pretty good point here and i want to uh break it down on the other side let's take a listen uh, but here uh, let me ask you this yes because people say well shelly you causing all this beat did you know that this community this many comedians yes didn't like each other listen man I, it's really sad to say this, but uh, our 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 community. I hate saying community. Community sounds so. Poor. Are we talking about the black our community? Society, or are we talking about? Are we talking about black, comedic? Um, no, because the white dudes. I'm gonna keep it 100. Because I know a lot of white comics, and man, they, they ain't beefing like. First, that. hell no. And they, they, I'm not saying they. There's not guys that don't like each other, but these, they they will hold that solidarity. That white male solidarity, white solidarity, it will hold it mm -hmm. because they all are on each other's podcasts. Rogan makes these kings. It's Rogan. And even though shout out to Adam Carolla, because I do his, I'm a regular on his, mm -hmm. you know, and um, they, they share each other. They get on each other's podcast. Right. They help each other all the time. Ah, I don't even want to say this, but if it causes controversy, I'm down with it. We ain't. <laughs> Real talk. We are f whack because here's the problem. We always have air our grievances on public platforms. Okay. Okay. Uh, there, there, that little piece, that little clip, there's so much to, to talk about. Number one, he knew that he was making a, a controversial statement because that's exactly what he led in with. If it causes controversy, then he's with it. So Godfrey definitely called. Uh, he said that, that we ain't bleep and then he said uh that we're whack like basically black comedians are whack but the, the point that he was making tk as you know is that white guys white comedians they all help each other they all help each other we're blacks we're not helping each other and we're coming at each other's throat and we're doing this all on club shay shay i want to break this down for, for so definitely let's put a pin in this real quick and tk when we come forward i want to hear everything that you have to say about it and I also wonder if if Club Shay Shay is becoming synonymous with sens sensationalism and uh, if it's starting to be a not good look or, you know, what 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 do we think of it? So I want to talk about all of that. We're also going to talk about Marlon Wayans. He calls his ex-girlfriend um, entitled because she's suing him for 
uh, child support, but it's not that she's suing him. It's how much she's suing him for. Uh, we're also going to talk about Halle Berry, who opens up about aging inside of her career. So we'll get to all of that on the other side. You are listening to The Raw Report on KBLA Talk 1580. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, BB, and you're listening to me on The Raw Report on KBLA Talk 1580. You're inside The Raw Report with Robin Ayers on KBLA Talk 1580. At KBLA Talk 1580, we believe that caring for the community means caring about the climate. You might have heard that we announced a pretty bold 12-month, $2 million campaign to do four things. Increase climate literacy, turn up the volume on communities of color in the climate conversation, connect everyday people with the resources they need to survive and thrive, and highlight frontline climate justice crusaders of color throughout this year. KBLA Talk 1580 will be bringing you insightful interviews on all of our shows to help raise your climate IQ. Each quarter this year, we will also be hosting free climate events in various communities throughout the city with food, fun, and forward-thinking conversations. Thanks to partners like LADWP, Metro, Caltrans, the Sierra Club, the California Community Foundation, the California Endowment, AQMD, MWD, and more. You'll also be hearing more about a couple of national town halls broadcasting live from Los Angeles, to which you will be invited. And we'll be rolling out a robust social media campaign on all our platforms, as well as an outdoor media campaign, all designed to educate, enlighten, and empower you in our fight for climate justice. We want cleaner air. Caring about the community means caring about the climate. At KBLA Talk 1580, we believe that we really can change the world. If we care enough, we care enough, we care enough, we care enough. Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season, you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a Samsung Galaxy A14 included when you buy an extended silver unlimited plan. Yeah. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Yeah. yeah! Switch to Straight Talk. Find us at Walmart and straighttalk.com. For network management practices, visit straighttalk.com. Device offer ends 41424. Taxes and fees apply. Did you know one of the best investments you can make? It's in yourself. At My Computer Career, in just a few months, you can start your new career in the high demand, recession resistant field of information technology. Isn't it time you invest in you and start a career in networking, cybersecurity, AI, or upskill to boost your current IT career? So get the ROI you deserve at My Computer Career, no experience necessary. Start now at mycomputercareer.edu. Financial aid is available for qualified students, including the GI. You're listening to KBLA Talk 1580, where climate is king. Climate is king. The thing no one tells you about periods is that your flow changes every day, and so should your tampon size. Tampax has five absorbencies to match your changing flow. If it hurts to remove, go down a size. If it leaks, go up a size. Only Tampax has a leak guard braid to help give you up to 100% leak and odor-free protection. All day comfort and protection for under $5 a month. Based on average U.S. consumer usage at manufacturer suggested price, however, pricing is at the sole discretion of the retailer. Excludes a Giving you your daily dose of entertainment and celebrity news. You're inside the Robert the Report. Robert Report. With Robin Ayers on KBLA Talk 1580. And it's Friday. We get a treat. We have TK Trinidad on the line with us. And we're discussing Godfrey, who was on Club Shay Shay. You heard the clip, TK. First of all, is, is Club Shay Shay becoming Wendy Williams like Lavelle says in our YouTube? Is this becoming sensationalism at its finest? Um, yes and no. I think I think with um, Shannon Sharp, because he's been in the industry, he straddles a lot of different places, like former athlete, like elite athlete. Um, you know, also in the ESPN space, all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and his interviewing style is very, like, you feel like you're talking to, like, a friend of yours just Definitely. in Club Shay Shay versus, you know, a podcast. Mm -hmm. um, I think people get lulled into just kind of speaking their mind. Whereas on some podcasts, you're very much aware, like, you know, what's going on and you're very careful in what you say. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit of both. I don't, I don't think... 
Shannon, obviously anybody who does those type of podcasts, they obviously want something that is going to be a little bit of a headline so, you know, more people will listen. But I don't think he does it, like, to get all the I got you moments. People okay. just volunteer the information because he's, he's good at what he does. And, you know, but his cadence, you know, you just seem like you're talking to a friend. To the like, homeboy. Mm-hmm. I get it. No, that, yeah. that makes sense. Um, well, Godfrey has now joined the chat. All right. He, he joined the comedian, the black comedian chat. As we all know, uh, several, at this point, several comedians have gone on to Club Shay Shay to either air out their grievances or clear up some things. A lot of people have actually cleared a lot of things up, which I definitely appreciate. But Godfrey is now putting in his two cents, and he says that we're whack. You know, black black comedians, you know, he's he's calling that, that community out, saying that, you know, basically, um, and again, I think that that was literally just to try to be, uh, you know, controversial. But does he make a good point that, here we are going at each other's throats, whereas white comedians, they're helping each other. They're like, hey, come on my pa- podcast and promote whatever you've got going on. And they're doing that for each other. Is he making a good point here? Um, well, I've, obviously, he's a comedian, so he can speak more to that. However, um, I follow a ridiculous amount of comedians, black, white and all the things. Mm. And I, I think the comedians that he made, you know, the Joe Rogan and stuff like that, everybody comes has their little, their click. Like Joe Rogan has a certain click of people, white comedians that like he rocks with. He doesn't rock with all the white comedians. Like you don't know all the white comedians. And I, and I really, I, I'm willing to bet not all of them get along. Like you're very much attuned with your people. And so, you know, like this group doesn't get along with this group, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's just for black people. I, hi- I highly doubt it. It's just more for us because we notice it. Like I, I rocked with just black comedians for the longest time. And it was just of maybe the last maybe eight years that I started like just looking at other comedians. And it's like, oh, these people are funny. This person's dry as hell. But you know what I'm saying? Like I, I kind of started dabbling in different, different, I want to say genres, but different, you know, comedians other than black. Mm-hmm. But I think that's human nature. We're not all, unfortunately, we're not all friends, and that's everywhere. You can go into an office and think the office is all great, but, you know, Bertha might not be hanging out with Vanessa. You know what I'm saying? And they're black. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I just, I, I, I get what he's saying, but I just also think that other comedians do the same thing as well. It just so, so happens that all the black comedians have been going on to Club Shay Shay, and so now <laughs> it's just, now it's just very, you know, he's black, Shan Shaw is black, all the comedians that are coming on is black, and they're all very popular comedians, so you gr- you lump, lump them all together, but that doesn't mean they all rock with each other. I, I hear that, TK. I completely agree with you. The problem is, I can't get it out my head, you know, when when I heard him say that. I started thinking about back in the day when we had, like, Deaf Comedy Jam, and we had... Um, even the kings of comedy and we had where you see black comedians coming together or promoting other comedians and making it an entire event. Like even when uh, Russell Simmons had deaf poetry and all of those things, it was a weekly event here in L.A. where people would come out because they knew and they they still do it here in a lot of the different uh, like the Laugh Factory, different comedy store, different places, mm-hmm. Ha Ha Cafe. Where you'll have nights and, you know, a lot of the comedians will come, but it's not being promoted amongst one another. And that is the problem that I'm seeing. I'm like, we used to see a lot more collaborative effort. And now they're turning into Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole and and beefing and and rap beefing. Mm -hmm. I have to disagree with you on that. Okay. Because if you read Bernie Mac's book, he talks about deaf comedy jam Mm -hmm. and how he wasn't liked about by other uh, some people Mm -hmm. and I think why it seemed back in the day where it seemed like we were all getting together is because we didn't have I'm talking like we like I was a comedian but they didn't have (laughs) as many opportunities as they do now Mm -hmm. meaning that you know there's black comedians who never touch a chocolate sundae they go other places not you know just because they want to there's more opportunities they're creating their own you know uh, movies and all this other stuff there's Mm -hmm. so many more opportunities now than there was back then because of social media 
So it seems like from the outside looking in that they're all working together. But if you read Bernie Mac's book and him talking about Kings of Comedy, they, you know, there was a little bit of strife there. There was. And I think that a lot of those comedians are open about it. But to me, that's more mm -hmm. of an exception to the rule rather than the rule. I think more of the rule back in the day. And when I'm talking about like the 90s and I'm sure before then, too. And as you mentioned, I think a good portion of it was because the opportunities weren't there. So they were creating their own. But it it would be really nice to see that continue, like that thread continue even till now. Right now, um, just this past week, just a few days ago, I know uh, Atheon Crockett did uh, something called the Microphone Masters where he had other comedians come. It was a whole thing, uh, just getting behind other comedians, promoting mm -hmm. other black comedians. And I would like to see more of that on a larger level when these big time, big name uh, A-list comedians and actors are doing that for, I mean, you still have it. Don't get me wrong. There's still people mm -hmm. out there doing it. I'm just saying I'd rather, I, I'd love to see more of that. Probably nothing but that. Um, it would be nice right. to see rather than them going at each other's throats. And then we have one of our own saying, yo, we, we whack. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he's calling us like, uh, well, he, I'm not, uh, I'm again, like you, I'm not a comedian, <laughs> but um, he's saying, you know, that, 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 you know, um, he's just kind of calling them out and, and then comparing them to, and it's just like, man, well, well, when we get to a point where you're comparing us to white people, that means that they have, they have, put down a foundation of uh, seemingly like ongoing support that and that we don't have. You get what I'm saying? So um, that's yes. just yes, my thought on it. What, if I can. Yeah. If I can button it up, I think, though, that is even though it is a, it is a negative statement, it's actually a good statement, meaning that there are so many black comedians that are making money and, you know, making a living off of being being um, doing comedy mm -hmm. that they don't all have to be friends. You get what I'm saying? Like, okay. it's actually a good thing. Not, I, I mean, obviously you want everybody to kumbaya, but if we have, if we have so many opportunities now that you don't have to rock with this black comedian over there, you can do your own thing with your group and everybody can still eat. That's a really, that's a really good position to be in. Yeah. And it goes back to the whole Chris Hop, Chris Rock thing. You're not wrong about that. The only thing I will say and I will add to that is I don't see that there's a problem if you're not clicky, clicky, buddy, buddy with other black comedians. That's not a problem for me. My problem mm -hmm. is when you start when you start knocking other black comedians, yeah. when you're start that's that's my problem. It doesn't have to be everybody is, you know, I would prefer to see collaboration. The Kings of Comedy was one of the greatest things that ever happened to black you know, com comedy period in the black culture. We talk, we still talk about that because of, right. and then even movies, when you think of like um, coming to America and the collaboration of Eddie Murphy and um, Arsenio Hall, like that's incredible. Things like that make a world of difference that we talk about for decades to come. So those things right. I'd prefer to see, but I'm not mad if, if you're not buddy, buddy, and you're not on each other's platforms promoting things. I'm not mad at, at that at all. I'm just saying, stop coming at us because now people are mm -hmm. looking in our, they're li it's, it's like uh, we, we're talking amongst mi mixed company and they're, and they're knocking right. us for it. And that's the part that I don't mm -hmm. like. I agree. I yeah. definitely agree yeah. with that. Um, okay, so let's go ahead. It is co-parenting day. It's National Co-parenting Day, and it's not looking very good for Marlon Wayans and his uh, his chi his youngest child, who is only a year old. The mother of of his uh, daughter. Her name is Axel, which is really beautiful. Um, it kind of it, it it hurts my heart. I have all kinds of questions about it, though, TK. I know you knew the what was going on and, and read the stories of what was happening and all that. But she seems to she's claiming um, that he makes well over two hundred thousand dollars per month and he could afford to pay child support. And um, she says that it that that includes five thousand dollars in daycare costs and three thousand dollars in groceries and household supplies. She says that she is unemployed, but her income and expense declaration says that her monthly expenses total $22,000, TK, $22,000. Mm. And what I'm so confused about is 
I don't know anything about their relationship, so I'm not knocking this woman by any means. They could have been in love at some point. I don't know. But there was a trend at some point, and I know this. This is a fact. There was a trend online where there were women who would tell you when certain celebrities or certain ball players were in a room or when they were in certain places so that all these other women could come and try to land this player. And the ultimate goal was to have a child by said player or said celebrity. Do you, mm-hmm. it, I don't know if you, if you notice that this seems to be an upward trend. And again, I'm not necessarily calling this woman. Um, I'm not saying that about her, but is that a trend that you see women trying to land a celebrity, a high earning celebrity, just so that they can have a, a baby with them to get like child support um, and things? <laughs> It, it, I, I want to say it is a trend. It, it takes two to tango, and at the end, it takes two to tango. And you know, the woman is hot, all these things, and um, I guess she lucks out, meaning that you know she has this baby. But it also also means that he didn't use a condom. So you know, he can bash the woman all they want, but it, both parties like it wasn't an okie doke. Both parties agreed to do that. So that's one thing. Um, as far as Marlon Wayans and this, I, 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 I get so kind of torn because it's like, if he makes $200,000 a month, then you know, like, who are you? You know what I'm saying? Like he makes $200,000 a month. Mm-hmm. And if you feel like you need that, then you should go and work. Like your child needs a certain amount, but I don't think they need, what did you say? Like $3,000 in groceries a week. Oh, I, I don't oh. think the baby needs that, that mm-hmm. much a, a week. A one, like, a one year old, especially. I, yeah. Right. So if that's the case, like if I were him, I'd be, and this is kind of where it gets dangerous. I would just fall for full custody and call it a day. Like if you can't take care of our child and now you're relying on me to take care of our child, then I should just take care of the child myself. And then you figure yourself out. Oh like, my goodness. Like it, yeah. I'm it's sorry. Just, it's, it's, it's a depressing kind of conversation because, um, and we'll, we'll finish this up on the other side, but really it's almost like a lot of these men, it's not that I don't believe in child support, but I feel like a lot of these men are being penalized for having children with these women right. because of the amount that is uh, that they have to end up paying in child support. Um, there there are a few people talking about child support and, um, and all of these things. We'll kind of get to that on the other side. But I, I definitely want to finish up this conversation because I don't know. I don't know where I stand on it, but I, I'm, I feel very strongly about this particular, uh, this particular conversation. So uh, we'll get to that on the other side. Right now we've got news, traffic, and sports. You're listening to The Raw Report on KBLA Talk 1580. Stay there. What's up, people? It's your boy, Harmony H. Money Samuels, and I'm here on The Raw Report with Robin Ayers on KBLA Talk 1580. What's up? More of of The Raw Report Report with Robin Ayers when we come forward. I'm Tyreek Wynn. Here's the latest on the Black Information Network. A new institution in Massachusetts has been named in honor of a former state representative, civil rights, and social advocate. The Benjamin Swan Institute of Social Justice was unveiled Thursday night. It is in partnership of organizations that include Swan Family Associates and the UMass Du Bois Center for African American Studies. Shalon Brown, owner of CB Diversify Consulting LLC, says the institute will work with local officials to ensure that black, brown, and other diverse communities have access to support and opportunities. The Chicago, Illinois City Council member wants to rename Columbus Drive in the downtown area after former President Barack Obama. Today in history, back in 2021, Evanston, Illinois voted to become the first American city to pay reparations for black residents for past discriminations and effects of slavery. The city gave $400,000 to each household. That's the latest. I'm Tyreek Wynn on your home for 24-7 News, the Black Information Network, and BINnews.com. Southbound side of the 710. Stop and go as you're leaving East LA from the 60 to get to about Firestone, then smooth sail in as you head over towards the 91. Southbound side of the 5 freeway. That's a busy ride coming out of Glendale from the 134. You're pretty heavy on the brakes through the Commerce stretch, and then once you get past the 605, things start to open up for you. The northbound side of the 5. That's a slow one as you're headed through the Sun Valley stretch. Just before you get to Lancashire, they're wrapping up with a car fire. So traffic is solid as you're coming up on that scene, and it stays pretty busy all the way to the 14 into the Newhall Pass. Robert Half Research indicates 9 out of 10 hiring managers are having difficulty hiring. Robert Half is here to help. Their recruiting professionals use proprietary AI to connect businesses with highly skilled talent. At Robert Half, they know talent. 
Visit RobertHalf.com today. Is this the title? This is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. The NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament is underway today. USC plays their first-round game Saturday afternoon against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. First game for the top-seeded Trojans in 13 days since they defeated Stanford to win the Pac-12 Conference title. 1.30 p.m. tip-off tomorrow at the Galen Center. Live coverage on ESPN. UCLA plays their first-round game tomorrow. They're at Pauley Pavilion against California Baptist. 6.30 p.m. tip on ESPN2. Two HBCU schools are on your women's bracket. Norfolk State is at Stanford tonight at 7 on ESPN2. Tomorrow morning at 10, Jackson State is at UConn. That game will be live on KABC Channel 7. Tomorrow night at 7 here on KBLA, join me and my co-host Neil Scarborough for Out of Bounds. You can join the conversation at 1-800-920-1580. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. <laughs> KBLA Talk 1580 is the fastest growing talk radio station in Southern California. Home to 50,000 watts and an audience reach of 12 million listeners. KBLA Talk 1580 is a pioneer for black audio content, including our groundbreaking $2 million climate justice campaign and the most loyal influential audience. According to an independent research study by the polling firm of Iteris, for the second consecutive year, KBLA Talk 1580 is the most trustworthy, reliable, and credible news source for black audiences and beyond in Southern California. Let KBLA Talk 1580 power your advertising dollars. Our omni-channel custom marketing solutions are specifically tailored to connect with your ideal target audience. We leverage audio, podcasts, streaming, digital, social media, and local activations to get your message out to the black community. Get in touch with our advertising team today at Advertising at kbla1580.com that's advertising at kbla1580.com kbla1580 we've got your black hey californians are you ready to make your home ownership dreams come true the california dream for all shared appreciation loan program might be for you first generation home buyers can get down payment and closing cost assistance along with a first mortgage to help you unlock the door of your new home applications open in april so talk to an approved lender to see if you're eligible find out more at calhfa.ca.gov forward slash dream or call 877-922-5432 a message from the california housing finance agency Agency. It's game day at Jim's house, and the spread is impressive. Mike's already done some damage with the hot wings, and now he's dropping back and going deep for another slice of pizza. I sure hope he brought the Pepto. Mike knows the Pepto-Bismol provides fast, five-symptom relief from unexpected stomach upsets. He's no rookie. <laughs> the way he's throwing back those nachos, he's the GOAT. Be ready for game day with Pepto-Bismol. When you have nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea, as directed, keep out of reach of children. Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season, you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a new Samsung Galaxy A15 for just $99. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Yeah! Good talk. Switch to Straight Talk for plans starting as low as $25 a line per month for four lines. Find us at Walmart and StraightTalk.com. For network management practices, visit StraightTalk.com. Device offer ends 41424. In-store activation on single silver unlimited plan or higher required. Family plan discount with four lines all on the silver unlimited plan. Taxes and fees apply. Keeping you informed about what's really going on. Who's got next? And what not to miss in entertainment. You're listening to The Raw Report, Raw Report. on KBLA Talk 1580. on KBLA Talk 1580. Happy Friday. It is National Co-Parenting Day. <laughs> and uh, hopefully that's a good situation for most. And for some, though, we know it is not necessarily uh, it's not necessarily a great co-parenting day. Um, 
We are talking right now about Marlon Wayans, who has to co-parent with his new one-year-old daughter that uh, he has. And now he's calling his ex entitled. He's basically saying, you know, he's he just can't believe the amount of money that his ex is asking for. He says if his parents were were here and alive, they they'd flip out. And he says two thousand. They'd flip flip out at two thousand dollars. The question that I was that I was sort of asking on the other side, TK, is, you know, it, it feels like sometimes men are being penalized for having children if they are high earners. It it does feel that way sometimes. And I get the entire concept that if you earn a lot of money, your child should never go without, and they should live. Um, in similar means than than you do. I get that. But if you are co-parenting, that means when your child is with you, your child is not going to be missing out on anything. If you are living nicely, your child is living nicely. And it doesn't mean that they should not help the mother of their child as well. They, she should have a nice home if the, if she's got uh, primary custody of, the chi- of, their, of their child. She should have money to buy clothes and food and all of that. I'm just saying sometimes it feels excessive. Uh, Right now, TK, I was looking at uh, a post that says Tristan Thompson, who, as we know, in in the NBA, he's reportedly having to pay his youngest child, his two-year-old son's mother, $58,000 in back child support. Now, I understand Tristan Thompson is, and he's also a high earner, but a two-year-old, for a two-year-old, they, you have to back pay $58,000. It almost just seems a little bit unfair. Um, TK, before I have you weigh in on this, Fahima's on the line, and I'm sure she's going to add to this conversation. Hello to you, Fahima. You there, Fahima? I don't hear Fahima. <laughs> me. Oh, there you are. Can okay. You hear- I hear you. Okay. Yes, yes. Can you hear me now? I hear you I now. To you, Robin, <laughs> you too. And to TK Trinidad. Um, so first off, if a couple are co-parenting, no one is paying child support. Only child support is only paid if there is a custodial parent, and the non-custodial parent pays child support. You may remember when I told you I had a I have a friend who is a high-figured mm. government official. He makes six figures. He is the custodial parent raising his two daughters, well, he raised his two daughters in the house that his grandparents owned, and his, their mother, who is a part-time teacher, is, not the, is, is a non-custodial parent, and she had to pay him child support. Mm-hmm. So you only pay child support if you're not co-parenting. Uh, and I get that. So, so, and yes, thank you for that correction. But what I'm saying also is if the father is in this child's life, like let's take Tyrese, as, he's a good example. He, we know that he had a very public case about the amount of child support that he was being ordered to pay. But he was, he's heavily involved in his daughter's lives. He, he's got two daughters he's involved in both of their lives even if the mother is the primary custodial um parent i understand that however i'm just talking about the excessive amount of money in my opinion and i'm i'm not trying to i understand yes i understand well 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 well, there had to have been some sort of conflict for them to go to court and they couldn't reach a mutual agreement outside of course In, in the situation with uh Wayne's uh, his child's mother is reportedly not working. So if he, if she, if if the child's mother is not working, and he hasn't contributed to the child financially, how is the child going to be provided for? I'm not speaking to the to the amounts that are involved, mm-hmm. but she is reportedly not working. The, uh, if he was contributing, she wouldn't have a basis to take him to court. So, okay, so let's put a pin in that. And Fahima, you can stay on the line for this. TK, give me your thoughts on this. If a, if a, and again, I'm trying not to sound judgmental. I'm, I'm just trying to get an understanding. I want to lay that foundation. I want an understanding and I want clarity on things like this for not only myself, but anybody who might be going through something similar. If a grown woman chooses and and tk you mentioned earlier it takes two to tango i get that but if a grown person um does not have a job we don't know the reason behind that i understand it but she has a child but you choose to rely upon 
you know, a child support or some sort of earnings from the man that you had the uh, the child with. Is there a problem with that? Or should you as a as a as an adult, as a parent say, you know what, by any means necessary, I'm going to go and like get a job to in order to provide. I think it's a, me personally. I think it's a little unfair to say just because I'm not working, I'm going to rely on this man and ask for an excessive amount of money. Correct me um, if you feel differently, TK. Yes, I have to preface this. I have no children. I just have a dog. Um, however, I feel the same way just because uh, throughout my life, I had to just make things work. And I've seen other women who are single single moms make things work. So it's like, yes, I think, you know, we, we would all want a, a life that's a little bit easier. You know, we want the best for our children, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But it seems like, and just listening to Marlon's last stand-up where he was talking about the love for his mother and, you know, his kids and all this other stuff, it doesn't seem like he'd be the type that would just cut his child out. So it's just one of those things where if the man wants to be involved in the child's life, then there should be something that is talked about before it goes into the courts. Because it just talking to men who have been in the courts and talking to men who haven't been in the courts, it just seems like the ones that haven't, they had a conversation with this with the with the mother of their children. They come to an agreement based off of each other's life. <laughs> And the most important thing is that the children know who their father is. The father wants to be active and you give mm-hmm. the father access to their children. Cause mm-hmm. that's going to benefit them long-term beyond money. Definitely. F- Fahima. Um, so, so let me get so you. Last point. Y- yes. Go last ahead. point. Mm-hmm. So I'm not speaking to the amount. If you look at Sherry Shepard, mm-hmm. who was a non-custodial parent and you look at Halle Berry in each of those instances, in that instance, she was non-custodial parent and those guys weren't working. Mm-hmm. So if there is not a, a mutual agreement and people are co-parenting, there is no basis to take the non-custodial parent to court because they are contributing. And I'm not saying that he was or wasn't, but if she's not working, how is a child going to be provided for unless the the person who does have an income provide for that child. And I'm not making a value this, judgment, but this is just the reality. Uh, but this is also a very circuitous conversation because we're just going to circle right back around to the point that I was making before. If she's not able to provide and she's not working, she should not have to rely on this man in order to, to take care of her child. I say do all things in your power. Now, if you are if you are searching, if you are doing your very best to provide or you know uh, gain employment, then 100 percent. And you're like, listen, I need help. I need you know, I need him to step in again. I don't know this particular woman's situation. So this is not necessarily towards her. This is more of a blanket statement saying that if if you find yourself in that situation by by all means, do whatever it is that you can to to provide a good lifestyle for you and your child. And whatever uh, is fair, whatever is fair, you ask from from that man. I just personally don't think that uh, these excessive amounts, we're talking upwards of eighteen, twenty thousand dollars a month for these babies. Now, again, situations change. Uh, children grow. Things become more expensive and lifestyles, according to where you live here in L.A., it is very expensive. So I do understand to a certain degree. But. I think that is for both parents to put in on. Now, uh, you know, if he is less involved or uh, things like that, sure, maybe put a little bit more on it. But if this man is is still parenting, he may not be the primary parent here, but if he's still parenting and he's still involved in this child's life, then I just see that it, it, it they need to balance it out somehow. So with that being said, Fahima, um, last question for you before I let you go. You can answer briefly. Do you think that the laws need to be revisited when it comes to uh, child support, both ways, men and women, since you mentioned Sherry Shepard. Well, again, again, I'm not speaking about the amounts involved. And so, and this is, this woman probably didn't have more, and I don't know, more than likely did not have uh, a a baby when she conceived this child um, with Mr. Wayne. So if she's not asking for anything for herself, who is going to provide for this child? Okay. Where's this child going to live? How is this child going to get food and clothing if the mother is not working. I hear your point. So, so I hear I'm your point. I'm not speaking to the amount. Yeah. But I'm not speaking to the amounts, but if two people are co-parenting, this is not an issue. 
it's it's this is I don't think that this is going to go anywhere because we're talking about a one year old here, a one year old. We're not even parenting this one year old at this point. Um, I, I'm still going to go back to to, uh, you know, in the amount is not necessarily what I'm talking about revisiting. They have uh, they have formulas and algorithms and things of how they even come up to these mm -hmm. amounts. That's what I'm asking if, if that needs to be revisited. But Fahima, thank you so very much for your call. I appreciate you and the insight that you've given. Um, TK, you, maybe you can answer that for me. Do you believe that um, these laws and the ways that they come up with these amounts, especially for high earners, um, men, men and women, by the way, and just maybe even across the board, do you feel like that needs to be revisited? I want to say yes, but the, the, the problem comes in the fact that some people have taken advantage of the system, both on the men and the woman's side, where, you know, he tries to hide the money to, you know, not provide for his child. And then on the woman's side, where she's trying to get the money because she knows he has it. Mm -hmm. So with law, and unfortunately, I had, to go, I had to go through many different legal issues last year. So I've learned a lot about the law. With law, it's really up to interpretation and also who's your lawyer. Um, so that all comes to mind. But I, I honestly think what probably happened, he gave her, he offered her a certain amount and she said no. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're now in court. Mm -hmm. I just, it just, because he doesn't really strike me as a person who just says, oh, well, I didn't want the kid anyway. You're on right, your own. He right. just doesn't. He doesn't really strike me as that type of person, just by how he's talked about his family, etc. He seems like, all right, cool, we're here, um, and like I'll take care of the child. And she's just like, no, nah, I need three thousand dollars a week. Like, I mean, <laughs> damn, what what is this child? I'm 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 eating off of fifty dollars. I'm on a budget. I'm eating off of fifty dollars a week. So I don't know what this child's eating. But if that's mm -hmm. the case, then let me know so I can step up my life. Man, I need somebody to adopt me. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a situation. Yeah, I mean, just like they have premarital counseling for, for people who are trying to get married, I feel like, and I, I feel like it needs to be more of a legal aspect to that. Um, people need to have some sort of counseling and know the person that they're going to have a child with. Now, obviously, everything is not, things are, are more than likely going to change. People evolve and uh, people get upset. <laughs> money changes, it, you know, earning your income changes. I understand all of that. I just, um, as a person who looks for things to be fair, I'm always looking at it, even across the board. And even, um, I know Fahima mentioned Sherry Shepard. Um, she mentioned, uh, I forget the other woman that she mentioned, but those, those, I understand they're in a very similar position. And even for them, it should be fair. It should be fair. Even if you are a very high earner to a certain degree, uh, I understand having uh, maybe a, more of an amount that you're paying out than, you know, s someone who's earning like an average income. I get that. But these excessive amounts really boggle my mind. <laughs> they boggle my mind and I just can't figure it out. And it doesn't affect me. I'm just, again, I'm all, only coming from a standpoint of being fair and, and just in all fairness. Not only does this man, um, typically we're talking about the men here, not only does he not really raise his child, he de doesn't get to raise his child the way that he may want to, but now he's got to pay this excessive amount. So anyway, I will right. leave it right there. Um, unless you had a, a last point that you wanted to get to, TK. No, no. I mean, I, 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 I see a lot of men who who really try to be involved with their children mm -hmm. and, you know, the system is not set up for them. And it's unfortunate yeah. because sometimes the system almost breaks this relationship and continues what in the 80s they tried to, you know, destroy the family. And yeah. now it seems like, OK, now we have the opportunity to bring the family back together. But now as you put it towards the court system. Now you're kind of doing that again. And, and the only person, because that child's there for 18 years, right? And so now this child's relationship with her father is severed for 18 years. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of hardship that they're going to have to deal with and all this unpacking that they're going to have to deal with because of the decision that was made before they were even cognizant of what was happening in Agreed. life. Agreed. So, you know, yeah. that's, that's another thing, too. Again, I'm not a parent. These are just all hypotheticals <laughs> yeah, in my head. I get so it. I understand. You pick with, you know. Yeah, no, I definitely get it. Um, well, it was a great conversation. I know we weren't able to get to Halle Berry. Maybe next time. But TK, let everybody know where they can find you online. Thanks for having me. You can find me on all the things everywhere at TK Turn It In. Thank you so much. Enjoy your weekend.
Thanks, you too. Thank you. When we come forward, we actually do have a Who's Got Next, and I'm so excited to bring this song and this person to the mic, So, um, or to the show, rather. They're not here. Uh, so we'll get to that on the other side. You're listening to KBLA Talk 1580. What's going on? What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Denzel Whitaker, and I'm on The Raw Report. You're inside The Raw Report with Robin Ayers on KBLA Talk 1580. If you're an adult in need of accredited high school diploma, the Los Angeles Public Library can help. You can earn one for free in as few as five months online with 24-7 access. You also get a personal academic coach plus special training focused on nine in-demand industries as well as a resume and cover letter to advance your career. Visit the website at lapl.org slash diploma. That's lapl.org slash diploma. Hey, I have a secret. Uh-huh. I use secret whole body deodorant because more than just my armpits stink. Uh-huh. Can I use it where my bra rubs under my... Oh, <laughs> yeah. And what about down there? You know, my... Totally. Four out of five gynecologists would recommend it. So I tried it, and now I get 72 hours of freshness from my pits to my... Ooh, I love that it's a spray. Me too. And it comes in sticks and creams too. Go get your secret whole body deodorant. If you're looking for the most epic place on Earth, let's start at the base of a massive waterfall. Then trek through the thick jungle. Then climb to the peak of a snowy mountaintop. Then once you get there, keep going. Because with intelligent 4x4 and 7 drive modes and a Nissan Pathfinder, the search is the real adventure. Available feature. Intelligent 4x4 cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. Climate justice. Climate equity. Climate resilience. By any other name, we demand Demand. environmental justice in 2024 and beyond. We're KBLA Talk 1580, and we don't black down. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. KBLA Talk 1580, connecting you with services and solutions. Stay Housed LA has the resources you need to know your rights and the legal support to back them up. The COVID-19 pandemic has cost people their jobs and livelihoods. This has left an estimated one third of households not being able to make rent and facing losing their homes. This is a fear no one in our community should have to face. You have rights though, and Stay Housed LA is here to help. Stay Housed LA is a partnership between the County of Los Angeles, the City of Los Angeles, and local community and legal service providers. Together, they provide tenants with the information and support needed to exercise their rights so they can remain safely in their homes. Find out more about your rights by participating in a virtual tenant workshop. Get the legal assistance you need. Find additional resources in Los Angeles County and the City of Los Angeles. Stay connected to Stay Housed LA County for updates. This and more at stayhousedla.org. Stay connected to Stay Housed LA for updates. This and more at stayhousedla.org. That's stayhousedla.org. Or call their hotline at 213-694-0040. We've got your black with a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. Giving you your daily dose of entertainment and celebrity news. You're inside the Robert the Report. Report. With Robin Ayers on KBLA Talk 1580. 1580. If you did not know... Nisi Nash Betts is married to Jessica Betts, who is a, a singer songwriter. She's actually phenomenal. This song right here is called We Drip. Check it out. <laughs> Get 
Figures in the moonlight Loving this view This view Soft Hips Hips, yeah That Dip I suppose You know Doing this we do for this we We trip We trip We trip We trip Doing this we We trip idea she was as talented as she is I just started really listening to her her music because I uh, was at an event and she performed live a song called catch me and I was like wait what the song catch me is really fire but um yeah Jessica Betts is is doing very well for herself she's got a great career in in the music industry so Shout out to Jessica for that. Um, it has been a great show. It always is, um, but it's Friday. We're about to go and relax and have a great weekend. Andy, I hope you have a great weekend as well. You know, all of you guys, Raw Squad, I appreciate you for checking in with me. Uh, TK Trinidad, I definitely appreciate the phone call. Fahima, I appreciate you chiming in as well. Um, always great. Well, it's Friday. That means that you will not hear a live show from Zoe Williams, the voice of reason. You can catch the best of though, which is just as good. If you ask me, um, anyway, we will be back on Monday doing it all over again. I appreciate you guys. I love you so much. My name is Robin Ayers and remember today and every day forward to be a blessing. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica. I'm Tyreek Wynn. Here's the latest on the Black Information Network. A new institution in Massachusetts has been named in honor of a former state.